Today we're going to be having a look at some of the old footage compared to new footage for Dying Light 2. I'm going to be focusing on combat specifically. Uh, something interesting you might see is that all of the special moves they've shown off for combat has been against humans. Most of the uh, monster zombie gameplay has been running away or looking at specific infected. First up, we're just going to be having a quick look at the dropkick. This one's an interesting one. Um, it almost seems as though the jump and the dropkick were part of the same animation in that second clip there. Whereas in that third clip, you almost feel that floatiness for a second. I mean, when you compare the first one directly to the third one, uh, there does feel like there's a tiny bit of float. Next up, we've got a classic wall run kick. Nothing too much to say about these ones aside from it does feel like there's a bit more float in that second one. Alright, now we're going to have a look at the slow-mo, and I'll have more to say about this at the end. Here, I've got a couple examples of blocking and retaliating. Just... Just take a look at this one. I fucking love it. The uh, ground stomp, guy falls over, bangs his head. Mwah. This one I don't have a comparison for, but it is pretty badass. Okay, now I'm just going to play some combat footage from the new stuff. Uh, well, we have a quick chat about a couple of things that I personally have found. There's been... A lot of debate around a couple of things. Uh, I'll get to the floatiness in a second, but first I just wanted to talk about the slow-mo, right? A lot of people have said it's, you know, maybe it's a little cool, but more of them have said not a big fan. There's been debate about whether this is part of the, uh, you know, the media version, you know, the, the game journalist version, if you will, that they're currently running with, uh, you know, with the extreme HUD, all of the tips, and uh, easier combat and all that. Um, it's possible. There hasn't really been any confirmation on it as far as I know. Uh, but I've been thinking about the way that I think it should work. I personally think that it's fine to have in the game, but you need to have it scale with difficulty uh, and not just like a flat scaling like you want to have it you know decrease by whatever modifier you choose you know whatever it is per level of difficulty raised but in saying that the end difficulty you know the nightmare difficulty that should have it disabled entirely now this one might be a bit of a hot take but because we're solely looking at the combat right now consider the following the floatiness is a positive for combat. A lot of the dying light moves, you know, a lot of the classic moves and the ones they're introducing, you know, they, they, they include the parkour. You know, you've got your drop kicks, you've got your falling attacks, there's, you know, a few varieties in this one. The floatiness gives you more time to, you know, assess the layout of the enemies on the ground, choose what move you're going to use, and aim it. Uh, if we completely ignore the feel of the parkour and we're just talking about dealing with a group of enemies it's a positive that'll do it for now it's quite possible that i will be making a follow-up video to this if it is received well because there's a lot more to go over but for now thank you for watching and i will see you next time